Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and in today's tutorial we are making a elegant style tumbler. So I'm actually involved in a tumbler swap and the theme is elegant tumblers and so I've already looked at the inspiration that my swap partner put on their wish list and I am going full force into this unique elegant floral design and so of course I'm going to be taking you along the journey with me. So of course everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked down in the description box. Definitely check that description box out for discount codes as well as links to all of my social media. And before you go, make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I upload tutorials every Tuesday and Saturday and you do not want to miss future tutorials. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's elegant style tumbler. All right, so I have started with a prep and sanded tumbler. This is a 20 ounce skinny handled mug from the Craft Haven. I've already done one coat of spray paint. I'm going in with my second coat of St. Tropez, which is a Rust-Oleum spray paint color. I will link that down in the description. So second coat, and then I'm going in to do the glitter. So we're of course going to do epoxy method glitter application here. So I have mixed up about five mLs of epoxy. So 2.5 mLs of part A and 2.5 mLs of part B. I have set my cup to dry after after spray painting and then set it in front of a heater to warm the cup so that I have a nice warm surface to work on and get this epoxy to spread on like butter. So I'm just taking probably about two mLs of this mixed epoxy and going over the length of the cup, making sure that I get every, every crevice and especially around the handle to make sure that I have enough epoxy on that handle and throughout the cup to make sure I can get my glitter to stick everywhere that I need it to so I end up with full coverage. So I'm gonna be using a few colors today. I have Americano, I have Thick Tiff, I have Tiffany Who, and Perry, and then I'm actually going to follow everything up with a fine white glitter. So this is Americano I'm going in with first. This is a gold from Peachy Olive Glitters. It has like a blue reflection, and I love the way that it kind of gives me those teal vibes. So I'm going in with just a little bit of a light dusting towards the bottom edge of the tumbler, and I'm gonna do the same with the top edge. So kind of just creating like a band of gold glitter and just kind of getting kind of a pretty pretty vague coverage here not really a lot of coverage just like sparse coverage here with this gold glitter and the next color i'm going to go in with is thick tiff thick tiff is from my asia creations it is a beautiful beautiful thick um, chunky like teal colored glitter and so I'm going to do a pretty sparse coverage of this over the entire length of the cup. I'm going to put this on the bottom or at least get a little bit of a dusting of thick tiff on the bottom and kind of go all the way around the cup. I'm not really too worried about the handle right now because I'll be able to get full coverage on the handle with my finer colors. And so once I am done using thick, thick tiff I'm going to go in with Tiffany Who. So Tiffany Who is a thinner and more fine cut of thick tiff. And so I'm really going to kind of lay it on and really attempt to get really decent coverage over the length of this cup. I will make sure to get glitter over the handle and make sure that I have pretty good coverage throughout the cup. Knowing that I still have a little bit of space and we're going to fix that by going in with Perry next. So Perry is a matte glitter. So it doesn't really have a lot of sparkle, but it is a beautiful teal kind of matte color. And so I'm going to go over the entire cup, really kind of filling in all those empty spaces where the glitter did not stick and making sure that I have a complete full coverage of glitter along my entire surface. And so once I have Perry on there, I'm going to give this a really good tap off and make sure all my excess glitter has fallen and then finally I'm gonna go in with fairy dust from shop vinyl gallery so this is the 4k glitter from vinyl gallery and I'm gonna go over the entire length of the cup really hoping to brighten up Perry and give Perry a little bit more sparkle so after I am done with that I'm going to very aggressively tap this off over a garbage can and then I'll get it on the turner for two full coats of epoxy so I am going to show you how I epoxy but I did do about 30 mls with two coats of epoxy before I moved on to the next step. So now that my cup is pretty smooth, I'm just going to give a light sand to the cup just over some of the areas where Americano kind of was sticking up. So I just went over kind of the cup where I could find any rough spots and I'm going to focus my attention a little bit on the top edge. I will again address the top rim once we go to add decals, but I wanted to make sure that I started sanding here so that I had a nice 
edge to work with so I didn't have so much sanding to do later on. So now that I have that all sanded, I'm just going to clean that with 91% rubbing alcohol and then we're going to go ahead and measure our cup. So I'm going to take my measuring tape here and I am going to measure the length of the cup as well as the width of the cup. So I have this little um, like sewing measuring tape, if you will. Um, you can purchase them off Amazon. But I'm going to measure my cup so that I can figure out how large I need my stencil to be. So I'm going to go around the width of the cup first. And this was about 9.265 inches in width. And then I'm going to measure the length of the cup. And the length of the cup was about 7 point, I think, 65 something. So I then put those, take those measurements in so that I can cut my stencil on my Cricut. So now I am in Cricut Design Space and we're actually going to use the Roses stencil that I used a few tutorials back for my three-way split tumbler. And we're actually going to make a full wrap out of this stencil. So I've just re-uploaded that image into Cricut and then I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to change the size of this. So I'm going to unlock my image so that my I can change both the width and the height and I'm going to then input my measurements that I got from when I measured my cup with my measuring tape. So it is going to look rather warped but once you get it on the cup it doesn't look kind of like that warp stretch out look plus we're going to do a little bit of some um, you know, additional decal work and additives to make this really all come together. So once I have inputted my measurements, I'm then just going to cut this on gold vinyl. So I got this vinyl. It's Oracle vinyl. I literally just picked it up from Hobby Lobby. And so I'm going to get this cut out on my Cricut on that gold vinyl, and then we'll weed it and get to the next step. So I've already done all the weeding and I've applied my transfer tape. And so I'm just going to take my squeegee tool and just make sure that this transfer tape is nice and straight onto my, my decal here. And so now it's time to get it measured on to the cup. And so I am just going to really pay attention and focus on my handled area here because I know that's going to be my troublesome area. And that's going to be the section that I need to make sure lines up really well because you'll be able to tell, obviously, if this entire stencil goes on crooked. And we definitely don't want that. So I have just lined up where the handle is and I've just marked off that sheet of paper or that stencil with a pen and then I'm just going to cut like very fine slits through the stencil so that I can kind of fit my handle through there. So once I have gotten my handle kind of fit through those small slits, I then can take my craft knife and just kind of cut around where my handle is going to fit. So I'm pulling up a little bit of the uh, stencil all together, the decal that's going to go on here. Um, in both sections just so that I can nestle that handle right in between where I've cut those slits. So take your time with this. Um, this is something that has taken me quite a long while to really get get familiar with and really get comfortable with because trying to put vinyl around a handled cup can be really challenging and pretty difficult. Um, but definitely just take your time, you know, practice, you know, use different types of vinyl. I think it's a little bit easier to use kind of the stenciling that I'm using here because it's not a full sheet. Um, but it, in order to get it to kind of match up. But at the same time, you know, it can be just as easy with a sheet, a regular sheet of vinyl as well. Just making sure that you do all of your measuring up front multiple times before you commit to placing it on the cup. So now I'm just going to peel back the backing off of one edge of this vinyl. I have set it in my cup cradle and that is to make sure that I get this on my cup as straight as possible because I don't want this going on weird because then it's going to look very awkward. I will also say that when you're cutting a stencil like this, you definitely want to make sure that you are really getting that transfer tape to stick to your stencil because nothing's worse than when you are attempting to get the stencil on and around your cup, small pieces not wanting to lift onto the transfer tape so you can wrap it around. So I did struggle with that a little bit. I don't think I spent enough time with my squeegee making sure that everything was adhered before I went to wrap it, but I did get it wrapped and so that's kind of kind of the the point as long as I was able to get that done that's kind of all that matter just took a little bit more time so I'm going to make sure that I get the handle area kind of nestled in first kind of really anchor that one edge down before I commit to getting the rest of this rolled on to my cup 
And so once that handled section was really taken care of, at least the front half, I was able to then just kind of roll on this vinyl just like I would with a full sheet of vinyl, just taking my time, making sure to push out any bubbles. Um, this was where you're, where you're going to see me kind of have to pull back a little bit on the vinyl stencil to get the um, some of the pieces to lift off and onto the transfer tape. But once I was able to get past kind of those difficult areas that didn't want to stick to the transfer tape, it really was just as simple as wrapping a full wrap on a tumbler. So once I have gotten the entire cup wrapped, I then am just going to get to the other side of the handle. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about what I do and what I'm thinking when I am attempting to make the two seams meet. So once I'm pretty close to the edge, probably about an inch or two off, I am just going to lift the rest of this paper backing directly off of the the transfer tape here. And so what I'm left with is just this probably about one, one to two inch section here that I'm going to kind of work with to get to meet the seam on the other side of the handle. So again, we haven't cut slits in this end. So that's kind of where I need to work on to make sure that when the transfer tape meets the other side of the stencil that everything lines up pretty well. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, but instead of measuring and pulling back, I'm just kind of cutting as I go and sticking the top and bottom pieces across the top part of the handle first before I commit to the in inner piece or under the handle section. And so I did lose a little bit of a, a stencil piece there, which I'll go in and reapply later. But now I'm going to cut those extra pieces of vinyl that may cover up the handled area. So once I kind of was able to have the seams meet on the other side, I'm just going to pull up on my transfer tape and remove all of that top sheet of that transfer tape there, making sure that all of my vinyl sticks down. And if not going back and pushing those back down onto the cup. And then I then go back and I'm able to just make sure everything is flat. I did have a couple of like air bubbles and crinkles that I just had to work out like with my fingers. But other than that, things went on pretty well. I did expect to struggle with this a little bit more because it's a stencil versus like a full wrap. And sometimes those can be a little bit more challenging to be able to accomplish because there's a lot of small pieces that you're kind of working with. Um, but I would have to say this went on and went better than expected. So I'm just going to put that additional piece of the roses stencil on to my cup in that open space there before I am going to then cut around the top edge and the bottom edge anything that's kind of over either of the rims to make sure everything looks nice and neat. So I did apply one more coat of epoxy over the stencil so that I could do any additional work over top of a nice smooth surface. So after that tumbler came off the turner, I am going to now make sure that all of my sanding is good, really focusing on the top rim, grabbing out that nail file tool to really make sure I get that fine line of stainless steel. That way I have really, really good um, adhesion of my final two coats of epoxy. So once I'm done sanding, I am then going to mix up a little bit of paint because we're going to actually do some hand painted florals on this tumbler. All right, so I'm going to make up mix up some paint. So I have three paints here. I have a white, I have a brown and a bright yellow. So I've started with white and given a pretty decent amount of white paint into the bottom of that medicine cup. And then I went in with just a square of brown. And so what I'm trying to get is like this cream color look. So kind of like an off-white eggshell type color. So I've added a little bit of yellow and then I'm going to go back in to lighten things up with my white again to again give me that off-white color. I didn't want to go in with a bright white. I just felt like that would be too off-putting and just would would kind of stand out very obviously. And so I wanted these to be more subtle, um, the roses that we're going to be making, so it looked more purposeful. And so once I have the paint all mixed up, we're then going to be adding some hand-painted floral roses to the tumbler. So I am using my favorite brushes, these Wet n Wild makeup brushes from the dollar store. And so I've just dabbed off the excess uh, paint on my cardstock here. And I'm going to create some kind of circles, like kind of like oval circles in the kind of empty spaces. So I'm kind of just choosing locations 
that don't have so much of the stenciling because I do want that stenciling to obviously pick be picked up when you're looking at the cup. So I'm kind of picking some of those op more open spaces where just the glitter is shining through to apply my large circles. And so I've done hand painted florals on a couple of cups before and I will be completely honest, they were not very successful. But I have tried and so third time's the charm and I think I've finally been able to nail at least the roses technique when it comes to hand painted florals. I'm not so great at the leaves or stems, but I think I've got the roses down. So I'm just making sure I have kind of even spacing between my roses here and making sure I have enough to put on the cup so it looks like there's a pattern and not kind of just random placing of the different roses. So once I feel like I have a good establishment of my rose patterns here, I'm going to take the opportunity to dry this set of paint and then go in with a second coat. So I'm going to go in with my second coat of the same paint over top and that's just going to make sure that my paint looks opaque and doesn't look translucent. So after my second coat, I then will let this dry uh, using my heat gun to kind of speed things up. That way I can go in with my paint pen in order to do all of the embellishments along these roses. All right, so now it's time to add all of the petals and details on our florals. So I'm using a Craft Smart Gold acrylic paint pen, and this is like a it's supposed to be a fine or medium tipped um, pen. And so the process for creating these is literally squiggly lines. So you make a squiggly line circle, and then you start to create squiggly lined petals all around. Um, what I've learned and observed is that you don't want your petals on top to start and stop in the same sections as your petals below. So I hope that makes sense. So essentially, you want to make sure that the petal is a little bit longer and stretches and overlaps the petal that's directly beneath it. So I am just kind of creating these very squiggly line-esque you know, patterns here. And I'm going to do that on all of the, the different uh, sections I have of paint here. I did go back in with my paint pen and go over the lines just to darken them a little bit. Um, I did love that this paint pen really does match very well to the stencil vinyl that's underneath. So I thought it was perfect. Um, and I just thought it really brought it all together. So the other thing that I will say about making these roses and making the petals for the roses is that it's really supposed to be more of an abstract look like don't be too hard on yourself I think that this is kind of along the same lines as hand, hand painted leopard so take a picture for inspiration if you need to from Pinterest from another tumbler maker someone who you admire and does great hand painted florals and use that as your inspiration for how you're going to create your floral pattern as well as the detailing in each of your paint sections. So that is kind of how I was able to finally feel like I nailed it at least for the roses section. I'm still a work in progress on some of the other hand painted floral styles that are out there right now but I think I've gotten roses down so maybe I can graduate and you know learn the next phase of hand painted florals. So when you're doing your gold paint pen, you're just going to continue to make those squiggly line patterns until you get to just about the outside of your paint circle. And then that kind of just is done. Again, I did go back in in all of my sections and darken up my lines because I wanted to make sure that I had a really good defined line and making sure that everything kind of stood out and just looked purposeful. Um, and I really just love how it kind of all came together. So I'm not going to bore you too much. That is kind of my take on hand painted florals. It is definitely easier with practice. Again, like I said, I have done now three hand painted floral cups and I don't feel like I'm an expert, but I do at least feel comfortable at doing it. And although I don't know every in and out to make sure that my hand painted work looks flawless, um, I do think that this is really something that if you practice enough, it's just like any other skill in the Tumblr world. Eventually you'll become really skilled at it and really familiar with what you want it to look like. And so 
practice, practice, practice if this is something you're interested in. I'm sure there are also plenty of tutorials out there. Um, I definitely would not call myself an expert, but I'm sure there are plenty of other tutorials that you can check out if you're interested in doing hand painted florals. So let's go ahead and skip right to the final layer of epoxy. So I'm not going to do final, final coats. I'm just going to do one more coat of quick coat over this cup because I am going to add a name and I didn't want to add a name to the tumbler in the tutorial in case the my swap partner is someone who watches my tutorials. So I wanted though to make sure that I show you how I epoxy because sometimes it can be rather difficult or challenging for people to epoxy over a handled cup. So let's go ahead and skip to that part. All right, so epoxying. So I wanted to show you guys this because handled cups can be a little bit difficult sometimes. I know that I struggled a bit when I first started, but the way that I like to do this is I like to focus on the larger part of the cup first, so kind of the larger surface area of the cup, and then focus on the handle last. And this is so that I can pay more attention to the handle, making sure that I can get full coverage on that handle and not really have to worry about the rest of the cup. So I like to focus on the full length of the cup, the top and bottom, and then I'll start to pay attention to the handle as I start to get closer to that edge. So you can also stop your turner if you need to and just focus on the handle for a couple of seconds, really making sure to drag your fingers along that handle, getting that outer side as well as the top side and the underside of the entire handle so that you have full coverage on the handle. So it takes a little bit of practice and time and definitely I've had a few coats where I've missed the handle altogether. So I've definitely been there where I've had some gaps in my epoxy along the handle, but definitely pay extra close attention to your handle that way you can make sure you get full coverage torch that and then that's kind of it so here is a look at the final cup elegant style tumbler was definitely a tumbler that challenged me a bit and I'm happy that I was able to put something together where I also learned some new techniques and I hope that you loved today's tutorial if you did definitely give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys again soon